Today is Sunday the 20th of October 2019. Really couldn't remember what year we're in. Yesterday I went to the model engineering show at the Foss in Warwickshire. I didn't really go with the intention of spending any money, but I was tempted. I have been thinking for a little while that it would be quite nice if I um, fitted a variable speed motor to my Myford Super 7 lathe, stopped fiddling about with the belts etc. So while I was at the show, this is not a sponsored video, a company called Transwave, and I purchased a three quarter horsepower three phase motor um, a sort of inverter gym cracky to convert single phase to three phase so that we can run the motor um, a separate control box some pieces of wire they supply all this as a kit so I didn't have to think about anything and uh, quite a lot of instructions which I may or may not read I did do a three phase conversion to my uh, cheap old Warco mill. Um, I think that inverter came from China, I can't remember. And a three phase motor sourced from a local electrical supplier. And I have to say, I've been very pleased with it. Hence the thought that I would convert the Myford. So I'm having a dry run on the bench of wiring this um, three phase motor to the variable frequency uh, inverter drive. First problem, the motor was hanging out of the support brackets. Don't know why. And the only way I could get the motor into this bracket, which is the one that's going to bolt to the lathe, is by bending this end plate in by about a quarter of an inch, which I've duly done. But I have to say, I'm extremely unimpressed and I don't know why it was hanging out like that in the first place. I haven't dropped the bloody thing and I don't know if anybody else has, but not a good start. I've altered the connections on the motor to facilitate delta running which is involved moving these tabs, they were along here and just running them across terminals um, V2W1 which is this one U2V1 which I think is that one and W2 U1 which is this one at the moment I haven't connected the earth which is there if the motor unfortunately runs in the wrong direction I believe I will have to swap these are the output wires I will have to swap these two around which should cause the motor to run in the opposite direction so we'll have to wait and see on that I've got the motor temporarily wired up without its independent variable speed control so at the moment it's just directly connected to the inverter and it's on so it must be flashing and uh, incredibly the motor is turning in the correct direction so by some stroke of good fortune I've got the wires in the right place uh, and that's running at a frequency of about just under 12 so that's good and I will now have a go at wiring up the independent 
variable speed controller. The wiring here is temporary, I'll have to make a better job of that. And I have made a mistake. I suddenly realised in the instructions it says that the, the shielding, the metal shielding on the wire should be connected to earth and I haven't done that so when I remake this lot cut it off I'll um, make sure I connect the, the metal shield to one of the earth connections and ditto the other end of the motor haven't tested it yet but I've now wired up the um, remote control on off reversing type switch uh, the only odd thing I'd point out is the instructions are pretty good tell you what to do um, but on the inverter there are actually two terminals marked CM and two terminals marked two terminals marked CM and two terminals marked number 11 um, which you use for a couple of the wires um, initially I just sort of put the wires in on the one I came to but on looking at the photograph which the instructions contain it's clear that they use different CM and 11 ter and number 11 terminals the ones I'd use so actually I've gone by the colour coded photograph and, and plugged them in there whether disaster would have struck if I had left it as it was Absolutely no idea. This is the remote control station by which you can start stop the motor, forward reverse and run and jog and also vary the frequency and hence the speed. And there are some parameters that need setting up on the inverter to disable the inverter controls and enable the remote control station to operate the motor and I have just spotted buried in the instructions a reference to the fact that before before connecting the remote control station one of the parameters in here FO1 which is the frequency reference source needs to be set to 1 and the instructions say that that should be done before before connecting the remote control station. I think I could have made that a bit bigger, the instruction. Anyway, I think what I better do is uh, disconnect this lot for the avoidance of uh, potential problems, set this parameter up, and then uh, reconnect all these wires. Unfortunately things have not gone strictly to plan. I thought I'd set up all the parameters correctly on the inverter and I got to the last one that I needed to do, I thought, which is um, parameter FO2, which is, you set that to 1, which in theory is supposed to disable um, the inverter control to enable the remote control once it's connected and it isn't connected at the moment because they tell you not to do that. Um, sadly I don't know whether I've done something wrong um, but I can't set this parameter FO2 it simply won't accept the command. So I've spoken to Joe at Transwave who has, or power capacitors rather, and he has kindly sent me some instructions to reset the inverter to its factory default settings and start the process again on the basis that I may have input a parameter incorrectly. So that's what I'm going to do. OK, I think I've cracked it. The 909, I think, is the minimum frequency that I've set 
um, for the motor to run at using the remote control. So if I press the green button, the motor now slowly ticks over and because the, uh, the frequency control is on zero, it's actually running uh, with a frequency control of nine. As I turn the control around, so we're now on value three, the frequency it's running at is about 19.8. And I think what I've done is set the maximum frequency to 50, for the time being anyway, and there you are, it's at 50, and the motor's going as fast as it can. I think in theory you could set the maximum frequency to 70, but I'm not going to do that at this time, since this motor is really more or less rated at 50 cycles, 50 hertz, I'm going to leave it at that. And then if you... I've tested the forward and reverse, that works fine. So if I press the stop button... The motor comes to a stop and 50 flashes, which shows that um, if I press the start button it's going to start at 50 cycles which is where I've uh, left this control. And what's going to happen now is what I suspect will be the really hard part because of restricted access and there's no way I can move my lathe which is to get all the bits out of the way and try and get to the motor at the back and switch the motor over for the new three phase variable speed device. So that's the next thing. The single phase motor is now taken off the Myford. A fairly miserable task because it's so heavy and uh, also inaccessible. I've left all its wiring and switches and reversing gear etc in place in case at any stage it has to be put back and will uh, therefore avoid me needing to work out what goes where but fingers crossed we won't need to do that I've had the new motor on the lathe but it's no good it just simply does not fit uh, this is the old motor and the old mounting plate they kind of look the same but they're not this one, the new one, probably can't see it, is around 23 centimetres long. The old one, the original one, is 22 centimetres long. So this thing is 10 centimetres longer than the old one. These slots, these slots are in about the same place. What I now realise is that when I removed the motor mounting plate to bend the end in so that it fitted the motor, I refitted the mounting plate to the new motor uh, the wrong way round, 180 degrees wrong, so that uh, one end fouled. So what I had to do is to remove the mounting plate once again, turn it 180 degrees around and refit it to the motor so that uh, the whole assembly now goes on the Myford and all the pulleys and everything line up. Right, finally and somewhat temporarily we've got the new three phase motor installed. I need to make a guard for it, keep the muck out of it. Um, at the moment I put the uh, inverter there and I haven't uh, as yet decided where to put the controller. The speed range varies from about 200 RPM to 
after 1100 this is probably all I really need for the method and that's on the basis of using the second drive belt um, obviously the range can be varied should I decide to move the belt along but for the moment I've got it on the second pulley so that's fine figured out what to do with the jog button you switch it to jog it's pretty obvious I suppose when you press the green button it just jogs the motor around can you believe and the reverse function seems to work quite well I altered the parameters to I think 4 second delay on uh, start stop and changing rotation etc so uh, doesn't seem like 4 seconds to me but I think that's fine I decided to fit a supplementary mains power on off switch adjacent to the inverter as the mains power switch behind the lathe is rather inaccessible. I used my handheld TACO to relate the various chuck spindle speeds to the positions 0 through 10 on the variable speed controller. This is the paper chart I prepared from the handheld TACO showing positions of the remote control speed controller 0 through 10 relating to various chuck speeds. Proof of the pudding and all that. I've got 12 cast iron wheels to turn for my latest locomotive project and the variable speed drive variable speed controller has proved quite a boon in not having to change belts to do the various drilling, reaming, facing and turning operations on the cast irons.